This man comes all the way from Brooklyn in New York, but he's been taking a lot of time to learn the Swedish culture. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Michael Marone. Hey, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey. All right, Mike, knock him down. Stop talking. Let's go. we got some stand-up going here. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, I just came here just recently, and uh, happy birthday to you, Helen. Is that her name, Helen? Happy birthday. John Bull, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm going to bring a little lightness to the show right now. I'm going to tell you about how I first came here uh, around uh, a little while ago, but I'm not going to tell you exactly because my first uh, thing that I do is about being here in Sweden. So I'm going to try something with you guys. Tell me how I do. You ready? Mit Nam Ar Michael, ya come up from Brooklyn. How's that? Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to SFI. I do call it SFE, I call it SFI. I figured out that language right now. It's E and I. Pretty much the same thing like Billy's is a W, it's really a V to me, but I figured it out. Now I'm at SFI for the last uh, you know few months now. I've been taking uh, A, B. And I think I'm getting the hang of it. It's only been uh, 10 years that I've been here, and I still don't speak Swedish very well. But with that being said, uh, looking for a job. You know Arbeitsvermittling? Has anyone up here been to Arbeitsvermittling? Okay, if you have a job, Arbeitsvermittling will help you with Alcas. I figured that one out. But if you don't have a job, they should call it Arbeitsvermittling. Bet you won't find a job here at all. You didn't like that one? Okay, we'll go to the next one. Now, finding a job, one of my friends told me that if I say, hey, you stay, I can get a job here. So I tried to get jobs all over the place. I couldn't get a job. I mean, so my friend said, say, hey, you stay, and you get a job. So I said, okay, I'm going to say, hey, you stay. So I went on this interview, and I'm in the interview, and the woman's talking, and I waited for every pause, every pause in the conversation, she said something, and I went, hey, you stay. Now she's saying in this uh, Swedish to, uh, to me that you're going to wash the dishes and then after you wash the dishes, you're going to go and pick up the plates and go wash the dishes. But I didn't know she said this to me because at the pause I said, eh, you stay. So I figured, okay, after I said, eh, you stay, I figured I'm going to get the job, hopefully. But anyway, she said after another pause, she starts talking some more, she's smiling at me. She's like, oh, oh, oh. I have no clue what she's saying. And she says to me, Vasias ala mandar. Now, I think that means it's, uh, I'll see you Monday, but I first thought it was maybe the Matrix or something. Like that, I wasn't sure. So I, uh, so I, I went to the job. I went Monday morning. I went to the job. I went to, to the uh, to get the job. I really had, I had a job. I couldn't believe it. I said Houston, and I got the job. I mean, that's probably the first time if you say Houston, you get a job anywhere in Sweden. So now I get the job, I'm working there, and I'm washing the dishes, and I keep on washing the dishes, and I'm washing those dishes, and I'm washing the dishes. She comes in, she says to me, uh, go and get the plates and do something else and do all this, but I didn't know what she said, so I just said, yeah, you stay. So she runs out, she comes back ten, ten minutes later, she's yelling now, she's saying, and all this stuff. I look at her and I go, yeah, you stay. Back to clean, clean the dishes again. She comes back uh, five minutes later with the bouncer, the owner, the boss, and she walks up to me and she says, uh, about to yell at me, and she says to me, you don't speak a word of Swedish, do you? And I go, precis. <laughs> <laughs> so I lost that job. No job for me. There we go. I've been trying to get a job here, but it's very hard to get a job. So um, with that being said, let's talk about Brooklyn and Sweden. What's the difference between Brooklyn and Sweden? Has anyone here been to the United States? New York. Has anyone been to New York? Come on, give a clap for New York. I know it's a tough country, but it's doing the doing the Obama's trying. No, I don't think so. Anyway, so now, the difference between Brooklyn and Sweden is I'm from Brooklyn, if you can't tell. And I get very angry. When I first came to this country, I got very, very, very angry. I used to like, why the hell is this thing going boop, 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 across the street? Why don't we just walk? There's no cars coming. But here in Sweden, you live to be 95, 100, because you take things slow and easy. So there's a little kid upstairs from my apartment, running around like a little rat, all over the place, running all over the place. It's Sunday morning, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm about to go up there and scream and yell and, and really rip this kid a new butthole. And it's probably on Red Bull too. That's another thing. No kids on Red Bull. Don't get kids Red Bull because that's pretty bad. Don't get kids Red Bull. So I, I'm about to go up there and my girlfriend says to me, she says, listen, listen, calm down, calm down. You, you, you can't do that. I go, why can't I do that? She says, you know, you got to think of it this way. You know, we live in Sweden 
and you know, when you hear all that noise during the winter months, it makes you feel like you're alive. So it's good that they're making noise, so you know you're alive during the winter months. And we all know what the winter months are like here, right? It's pretty uh, down. But you make the best of it, because this country is a great country, and that's why I'm still here. And I'm a Svens Melamboria. <laughs> I don't speak a word of Spanish. You guys are great. <laughs> Thank you very much for that one. Now, also in Brooklyn and uh, Sweden, there's a difference as well with the culture. I think your culture here is very good. I think you have a great time here with your culture. I think you guys take things the very easiest way of doing things. You know, a guy back in World War II said, the reason why uh, Sweden's such a great country is because when they actually, when they came to try to bomb the place, they couldn't find it because it was so dreary and the clouds in the, in the, in the, in the, they couldn't find it to bomb anything in this place. So you guys have a great country. That was a stupid joke, but I'll try something else. <laughs> Let's go to my next little funny thing. Um, okay, when I was a little boy, my dad, he would come and get me to go to school. Now, I'm dyslexic and hyperglycemic and ADHD. If you can't tell by now, that's why I run around the stage like an idiot. But uh, my dad would come in every morning and say to me, uh, it's time for school. But I didn't hear him say it was time for school like that. I heard my father come in to tell me it was time for school like Darth Vader from Star Wars. <laughs> Son, it's time for school. You're going to get picked on by all the kids, so get up now. <laughs> now, that's the same way when my girlfriend asked me to make love. <laughs> she has the same thing. She says the same thing to me. She says, oh. Michael, time to make love. And I'm running out the door for that one. But like I said, the marriage is beautiful here in Sweden as well. Now I'm going to go on to my next little funny little thing. Uh, would you like to hear about the guy running with the, uh, or would you like to hear about the uh, the chicken? Which one would you like to hear? The chicken. Okay, this was actually my ending joke, but we could do this one and do the other one after it as well. Okay, I'm going to try to get this one correct because I'm kind of confused right now. I'm a little nervous and now uh, excited because I'm at John Bull here and I'm having a great time and everyone looks great. Happy birthday over there. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day! Are you uh, involved for Valentine's for your birthday? Okay. So anyway, uh, here's the story. I have a... Um, what's the difference between erotic and kinky? Does anyone know what the difference between erotic and kinky is? Anybody? Now I'm going to try to say this right because I screw this one up all the time. Now, uh, kinky is if you take a feather, and I was at a hang bar last night, and they told me that uh, some women in there were pretty pissed off at me because I didn't include a man with this joke, so I'm going to include a man in this joke. So if you have a feather, you take the feather and you tickle your man or your woman with the feather all over her body, that's kinky. Now erotic, you use the whole chicken. <laughs> anyway, I'll do my last one, the running joke. Uh, there's a guy named Forrest. You guys all know Forrest Gump, right? From Forrest, from uh, Forrest and the uh, Forrest guy from whatever uh, Forrest Gump. I guess that's the movie, right? Forrest Gump. So Forrest is my friend, and Forrest finally found himself a woman. And this woman of his is a married woman. So Forrest says to me, "Hey, I found myself a woman. She's a married woman." I go, "Good for you, Forrest, but you may get into trouble with that." Oh well, yeah, I did. I, I was making love to her the other day. And as I'm making love to her, her husband comes home. I said, Boris, what did you do? He said, well, I jumped out of bed, I ran completely naked into the bathroom, and uh, he saw my girlfriend completely naked, and he started making love to her. So I said, so what did you do, Boris? He says, well, I got out of the bathroom, I went through the window, down the window, and I saw a bunch of joggers jogging. So I said, you know what, let me join in and start jogging with the joggers, because my name is Forrest, I like to jog. So he joins the joggers, and one of the joggers says to him, hey, he's jogging right now with the joggers. And one of the joggers says to him, hey, you know, you're completely naked. And he says, well, I'm a naturalist, he says. And then he says, a couple seconds later, he says, well, you still have your rubber on. And he says, well, I was expecting rain. <laughs> anyway, I'm Mike Maroon. John yeah, Mike. Mike. Have a great evening. That's good, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, give me going for Mr. Michael Maroon. Woo!
have a question for the